Natalie, you have you're, you've played characters in the past season that have just uh, been in a lot of peril, uh, a lot of danger for you. Uh, both justified, where you've been a guest star this past season, and the following, where you've been uh, on all season long. Um, what's that been like for you as an actress, just to be always in trouble and danger? Um, it's exhausting, but it's 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 a good exhaust exhaustion. Um, it's sort of what you hope to get to do when you're when you're studying. In, in school when you're in drama school, um, those are the sorts of roles that I think that you assume you're going to get to play and then often, more often than not, you end up, you know, getting, or at least I have gotten um, more, more talky stuff. So the action is new and it's not familiar and I've been a little bruised, but it's been really good. Well, let's start with Justified, if you don't mind. You've been on that longer, even though you only had a couple of episodes this past season. I guess when we final the final moments we see you in the season, you're about to uh, about to head off and have a baby, uh, your baby with Raylan, uh, especially that episode Ghost. You uh, get to kick a little tail as well as he does, right? Yeah, I feel like kick and tail kind of got to culminate at the same time with both shows. I think that that certainly on on the following I started out as someone who is somewhat passive and and reactive and as it's gone on I've become more active and started taking more action um, and it just so happened that I got to do the same thing around the same time on Justified so I felt like I was um, it was really empowering and it was really nice because Winona has has also been quite react. I tend to play reactive characters, um, and Winona is certainly no exception. So for her to, people really responded. People really, really like to see that, um, and I think that it's because of the buildup and because that she's never really been in that position before. Um, she got to show a very different side to her. Now, was your lack of time on this past season something that was planned and allowed you to go off and find something like the following, or did your new role in the following cause that to be more of a guest role this past year? Well, I had I had only signed on for Justified for two seasons, and the th the third season was, you know, we had I had gotten together with one of the producers, and she and I talked about the possibility of me finishing out the storyline because they didn't feel like it had been wrapped up properly at the end of season two. So season three was sort of a way where I could I could transition out and they could find a way to m have a little more closure. And um, they were really great about making sure that I was going to be avail available for pilot season for, for the following season. And um, they were really accommodating, which doesn't happen often. So one of the um, one of the caveats was, you know, would you would you mind coming coming back for a, a certain amount of episodes um, in, in the seasons following following the third season. And I, I said, yeah, that's going to be up to wherever I go. And luckily, Fox and FX, they have that synergy. And um, Fox was nice enough to allow me um, three episodes a season on Justified. So it worked out really It doesn't generally work out that way. And, and it, it did with us. And we're really, really grateful. Obviously, most of your scenes over over all the seasons have been with Timothy. What's he like to work with? I, he's great. I mean, you know, everybody. I can't. I can't come up with anything new. Everybody's already said it. I wish. And when I try and be flip, I get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so um, he's great. It's boring. I know. Well, he plays the character so casually. That usually, and and when that happens, the that means the actor is just incredibly a prepared kind of an actor that's that's not nearly as casual as the character oh the no none of us are prepared there's nothing to prepare we um we generally uh, don't well I, I you know I can't speak for the other actors but I never the scenes that I do it's never on the page it's always made up on the spot so he's not prepared because there's nothing to, we're none of us were prepared so <laughs> do it on the fly now on the following you play Claire Matthews um, the ex-wife of James Purefoy's character, um, uh, Joe Carroll, and then of course uh, you've had an affair with Kevin Bacon's character, Ryan Hardy. So that's 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 a quite a complex area you get to explore there. Did I have an affair with him? I wasn't married. Neither was he. 
Oh, okay. I'm not really sure, but you had and, you had you had something with him. It's fair for you to say that because that's in that's in all the the press notes, and that's even talked about on the show. And I I get very confused with that terminology. I also get confused with um, the fact that everybody refers to me or my character as his wife. We've we've been divorced for ten years. It's mm -hmm. it's like everyone's in grave denial about my marital status. So yes, Kevin Bacon care Kevin Bacon's character and I and my character um, have had a relationship. Um, you can call it an affair if you'd like. Uh, it's it's over when when the show starts and these two characters have to come back together and and deal with a lot of unfinished business. Some stuff that hadn't been worked out is going to have to get worked out. Now, a lot of stuff happened in this past episode, the past couple of episodes, and I believe that leads into the finale this coming uh, week. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> what, a lot of remind secrets. people kind of what happened at, right before, what's, and kind of set up this finale, which I'm, I'm sure you can't talk too much in depth about, or they'll kill you off. No, but, I know. Uh, I get, what, tell us, I what, tell us what to expect. Well, um, Let's think back to what happened. Uh, I, oh, there was a major death, and I won't, I won't, I won't say what. I get so nervous. Um, there was a major death, um, and the that that propels that particular storyline um, to a whole other place. Then there's the triangle of Joe and Claire and Ryan. Um, Claire knocks him over the head with a wine bottle, I believe. That's one of the last... Oh, no, we see her get on the boat. That's what it is. She gets on a boat, and they go away. Um, and then there's there's some really, really gruesome stuff happening with um, Agent Parker uh, in the coffin. So everything's just sort of ratcheted up to 11 right now, and it's going to go up to, like, 12 or 13 on Monday. Well, this should is just the very definition of a cliffhanger every single week, practically. Every week, yeah. What, what, as you talk to fans, as you go out in public, what are people saying to you about this show? Um, people are, people are very, very loyal to the show, um, and and I haven't really seen this kind of loyalty in a while. It's almost like it's almost like there's subliminal messages embedded <laughs> in the show, forcing people to to watch when they really just want to, you know, do this, um, like they can't, they can't look away. So, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, really grateful that, that it found the kind of audience it found because you know, you know, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I don't want to say there's a lot of violence. I mean, there is a lot of violence, but it's the, the core of it is more of a thrill ride and it's more about what you don't see. And, um, you know, I, I I think that that people really really respond to um, that in addition to the relationships. I think there's a combination that um, has really drawn people in the 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 thrill and then and then the the people and the relationships and how they all come together. And we're going to interview James on Monday. What's something we sh what's something we should know when we have that chat? What's what's some kind of inside little story you could tell us? Well, is it going to be before? The finale airs. Uh, I guess it'll, it'll be during the day, so I guess it will be before the finale. Be. Um, there's so there's so very little that I can say because so much happens in, in the finale, and uh, it changes everything. It changes everything. So, unlike a lot of you know final final episodes of a season, I I think there's going to be a great sense of closure. Um, while still having the cliffhanger, and he's the sort of central part of all of that. And we'll talk to Kevin Bacon in a couple of weeks. Now he's been a part of all of our lives for over thirty Forever. years now. What what yeah. did you learn about Kevin Bacon that you didn't already know when you started this job? Kevin is um, Kevin's really funny, but and a lot of people are really funny. So that that's not really a revelation, except his um, his humor is so. It so catches you off guard. It's so subtle, and it's so um, almost disguised in in this this beautiful persona. He's such a nice guy, and so when it comes out, it's such a zinger 
that you don't expect it, and it's um, sort of thrilling to be around, like butt-gusting belly laughs with that guy. You know, I almost hate to even bring this up because I've seen it so often online, but can you help him a little bit with his tie and make sure it's, it's not so loose? No, it's supposed to. It, that's very intentional. <laughs> I've just seen that so often in, in the comments online. Well, he, um, he, b b before he puts his clothes on, his, his costume on in every episode, he, he wrinkles his, he puts water on his shirt and wrinkles it up to make sure that it's, um, that it's not freshly pressed. And, and the tie is also a part of that because he wants, he, we tried to go, <laughs> we tried to go with realism for this thing. I mean, I had, people were really upset about my, my eyeliner. They were like, why is she wearing so much eyeliner? Well, it was left over from the dinner with Joe, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse mm. and worse because Claire wouldn't take a shower. She wouldn't wash her hair. She wouldn't wash her face. But instead, people were like, why is she wearing so much makeup? It's because, you know, we're, we're really trying to keep that realism going, and that's one of the things with the tie and with the, the shirt, and, you know, it's the, the little things that we're trying to insert in there. I've got our chat room open tonight. I'd love to ask you a couple of questions from there, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. Broke One wants to says, Hi, Natalie. I love your work. Been a fan from way back when you were the best reason to watch Passions. Oh, goodness. My question is, or her question is, what, what do you look for in a director, and what kind of what director that you haven't worked with would you love to work with? What do I look for in a director? I wish I had any say. <laughs> if I had to say, I could answer that question probably much better. Um, but you know, I just I get hired for the project, and the director comes with it. So I, I will say that the that that the best directors I've worked with, and it doesn't mean that that the other ones aren't equally as good. But hands down, unilaterally, the best directors I've worked with have been actors. Hmm. Um, doesn't mean the non actors aren't good. It just means that every single actor that I've worked with who is or every single director who has also been an actor I've worked with has been outstanding um, and I have a theory behind that but it's kind of long and drawn out uh, so you know I, I guess if I had my druthers I would certainly maybe go for one of those Kevin's a very good director by the way as well yeah I'm hoping he he I mean he's because he's got nothing else to do I'm hoping maybe he he tries his hand behind the camera on the following. We'll see. I've wondered about that. You know, he, he is a great director, but being the lead on a drama, I believe it's just so time consuming. I don't know how somebody can do that. Well, you, you don't have time to prep. So generally, I think how it works a lot of the time is you, um, I mean, I know this, this, this works on another show. I don't know if it works for, for this, but you, um, you direct the first episode because you have all that time that you can prep and then and then after that it's just a runaway train so there's no way but I, I would think that would be the best solution to that problem yeah I've noticed the last couple of years on Mad Men John Hamm has directed the second episode each season which probably meant he got that script back you know weeks before they even shot the first exactly they probably had had both of them ready to go in the can before weeks before they started uh, another chat room question oral graph I hope that's right What's it says, Natalie? What shows are you a fan of? Um, I'm a big TV watcher. I have I I take issue with people in this business who claim not, not to watch TV. So um, I watch a lot. Uh, I I mean the usuals that that I watch Mad Men. Mad Men's the only show I watch live actually. Um, uh, Community. I'm a big fan of Community. And. Um, <laughs> I'm a big TV watcher. I watch two shows. Um, <laughs> I can't think of any other ones, but those are the two top. Those are the two that I get really excited about when I see that I have I have new. Oh, uh, Portlandia is in there. I'm trying to think like what's on my DVR. Um, I I will as a very 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 guilty pleasure and something I'm not proud of. I will say that I am I am a watcher of the Bachelor and Bachelorette series because I have girlfriends and we drink and watch. What? That's a wide variety. I think so. Yeah. I, I would love to know since you're on, you've been on two really incredibly good dramas. What's your take right now on drama on TV? It seems like to me, say the last 
four years or so, uh, there have never been so many, you know, high-end great dramas, I don't think, in my lifetime, all airing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're, you know, a lot of people talk about the golden age of television being right now, and, and I agree. I think that there's a really interesting juxtaposition going on because there are, and comedies, not, you know, as well as the dramas, I, there are so many beautifully shot, really well written, gorgeously acted shows on TV, um, all at the same time having some some pretty pretty disgusting trash. Um, and I'm not saying that, that that's not um, useful as well on the television landscape because you know you need you need all ends of the spectrum, I suppose. But um, I, I think that that it's a it's a it's a fascinating time also because. Uh, a lot of people, actors, directors, writers across the board are switching to television because the film industry is just so inaccessible right now. And, um, and I think that, that a lot of the great talent are moving to TV and it's really exciting because the, the, the scope is just getting bigger and bigger. The channels and the internet and everything's just becoming wider and wider. So soon we're not going to, it's not going to be as limited as it once was. Well, we really appreciate your work, appreciate your joining us today. You're going to be on that Emmy ballot this summer for uh, guest actress for Justified and supporting actress for the following. So good luck on those, and uh, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much.